Hello everyone, I'm Marilyn Flair from Monash University. I'm Professor of Early Childhood Education and Development. I'm here today to talk to you about Play Worlds and how you can use Play Worlds to support your program. One of the, the characteristics of Play Worlds that I'm going to be talking about is the, is the idea of an ecology of Play Worlds where you can use it pedagogically as educators for different things such as thinking about a scientific play world or an engineering play world, or it could be about social and emotional development. So it might be like a respectful relationships play world, or it could be some other form of narrative development play world in the area of literacy, for instance. So this is kind of the ecology. But if we're thinking about, well, what is it? It's a program of of learning and development, which is about creating imaginary situation together with children. And in that imaginary situ situation, we change the meaning of actions and objects and create interesting scenarios. And so there are five pedagogical things to think about in planning for a play world. The first one is about selecting your story. And I have metaphorically, this actual basket to illustrate the idea of a play world for us because it is going to be like your toolkit for how to develop a play world. So selecting a story is really important and I'm going to talk about that um, in relation to what are the things that are important there before I share a little more about the other parts of planning for a play world. Selecting a story. First thing that's really important is to think about the story having a very complex plot because a play world is not just one day. It might be one day every day for a week or it might be one day in one week and then the next week. But the idea is that you revisit the story over and over again with the children in this imaginary space. And so therefore selecting a story which is quite complex means it's a little more engaging for the children and for you as the educator. The second part of selecting a story is thinking about the kinds of characters that, um, that are in here. You need lots of characters, but not all storybooks lend themselves well to having 25 characters. But what you can do is think about the main characters and then add to that by the main characters having cousins who live in other countries or visitors who might come to the play world who can then be taken on as a character in the story. So that's this, the second thing in, the, in selecting a, a story. The third thing in selecting a story is thinking about the story having some sort of drama, some sort of dramatic dimension to it so that it's exciting and also so that it can actually lend itself well to a problem situation that has to be solved and that needs to, to be developed over time as new characters enter the play and help solve the problem. And finally, it's thinking about in the selection of a story, something that you really enjoy because you're going to be a play partner in the story. So that is the first dimension of, of the pedagogy of a play world. The beauty of Charlotte's web was that Ariana and I loved the story so much. So I think if you enjoy reading it to the children, it, it helps a lot. Um, yeah. And we found over the various play worlds that if you can choose a story where you can really develop empathy with the characters, that's one of the most important things for the children to then be engaged to help solve problems with the characters. The second dimension that we're going to look at in our toolkit is about designing spaces. And the designing of the spaces and uh, can be outside, so we might decide to use an obstacle course to take us to particular places where we might be visiting a special tree or a special chair or we may be using a trestle and beams to create a pathway to this play world. So the idea is to think about how we might outside use some spaces that can create this play world. Then inside, inside the play world, we can also be thinking about what is it that we could change and what spaces could we use. So for instance, the home corner or the block corner could be transformed to be a particular play world or another room in the, in the centre that's not being used could become a play world space as well. 
But here we can say, if we say, for instance, the block corner, the block corner, then the blocks become in service of the play world. So the play world is the focus and the blocks support the construction of what might be the new building or the new bridge that takes you to some really interesting place in the play world. So that's in relation to that dimension, designing the spaces inside and outside for the play world. If we go back to our trusty toolkit, we start to think about entering the play and how we might enter the play. So for instance, we might decide that we want to use a magic wand. So our magic wand is about saying we're now moving into this play world and the magic wand is signalling that. So it's this entry in but also the entry out. So when we go out we might use the wand to do this as well. So that's just an example of how you might do that. But it could be in the outdoor area, it could be something like a tunnel that you crawl through so you go into this microscopic play world. It could be many different things. It could be a chair, it could be a door frame, it could be a range of things. But it's this idea of going into the play world and out of the play world together as a group. Come through guys. I'm waiting to catch flies. Come on everyone. Then if we go back to our trusty um, Play Wheels toolbox again and we look for the next pedagogical strategy, strategy and that's about planning the play inquiry or the scenario. What might be the problem that arises? So for instance we might have a new character that arrives in a special little surprise box and in this case we have a little ringtail possum and the ringtail possum has a particular message that they want to give to the children and so what we have is and it have something being introduced and the message might be something to be solved it might be something to be modeled it could be anything but it gives the possibility and it expands the play world makes it much more complex so that it can build over time I need some good old friends to help me with my apple orchard. It isn't growing. If we go back to our trusty toolkit again, we can start to think about what might be the way we interact. And we might say, for instance, decide that as uh, educators, that we together um, take on a role in the play world as well. And we may have one educator taking one role and another educator taking another role. So it's planning for how we're going to interact because we are play partners in this process. And it's really, really important for us to be thinking about um, what role we will take and how we will do it. I think I might like to be Charlotte the spider who spins. So I wanted to share some little examples of what that might look like. If we're, taking a, if we're entering the play world in costume, for instance, and, uh, but it doesn't have to be, um, then we might take a role where we're equal with the children trying to solve the problem. Or we might take a role where we set up the problem because we come in being whatever character of the story and we explore what um, needs to be done and we, we lead the processes of being able to take this forward in some way. What would be a sign that we had seen Charlotte? What, what, what would does Charlotte do with her what? silk? So we kind of have two, two different roles that, the, that we could be taking, where we're with the children or we're actually leading the children. So this, this is just an example of planning our interactions. Today we saw Ariana and Rebecca engaged in the play world, a conceptual play world of Charlotte's Web. Five important things were explored. The first one was selecting the story and why it's important to choose one that's uh, very engaging. The second area that was explored was designing the play world space, both inside and outside. The third area was planning to enter the play to enter the play world and to exit the play world. The fourth one was introducing the problem scenario and how it might be solved together with the children. So the fifth one was around Ariana and Rebecca talking about the, the importance of planning how they interact with each other in the play world so that they can help the children collectively solve the problem and to deepen the play. Together, this toolkit of these five pedagogical ideas about setting up and developing a play world are really important. You need to make this your own because you'll select the story that best suits your children. You will decide how to take this forward because you know your children well and you'll be able to build into the play world lots of, lots of these dramas, problem scenarios and support the children in character to solve those problems.